hello to all of you. Good evening. It is a very humid, drizzly clouds. Uh, we just had a lot of rain uh, on Saturday and Sunday. We received uh, about two and a half inches of precipitation. And uh, the great news, though, is that uh, Friday at 3 p.m. last week, we finished the harvest of 2023. We very closely uh, were looking at uh, this tropical depression Ophelia, which I just l was curious to see what the meaning of the word Ophelia is. Apparently it comes from Greek and it means uh, benefit, beneficial, which uh, I don't think it was uh, potentially for us if we still had grapes on the vines. Fortunately, we, we time it to not get into a wet period. But uh, all, all in all, the 2023 harvest uh, has been uh, spectacular. And uh, you heard me many times saying that uh, the month of August and September it went, is when everything happens. This year, I would say that uh, it was almost a perfect season all the way to uh, July. We did have apprehension over some very large storms that were coming, uh, creating above the, on the other side of the Blue Ridge Mountain, moving from the west. Uh, and uh, fortunately, uh, we missed quite a few large storms in the month of August. And uh, you heard me say before that uh, a lot of this is a lot of it's caused by our um, landscape, our uh, terrain here, the mountain just above us, the Goodlow Mountain, um, has a drop uh, from about 1,400 feet. It drops down to only 700 feet, not far from here. A lot of storm they funnel through there in the path of least resistance. Therefore missing us uh, in this area, Goodlow Mountain and also down in, uh, in the lower areas. So missing those storms really made a big difference. Then we enter into later part of August and we we're starting to observe almost some, uh, some drought in some areas. And then one storm in particular we received uh, uh, a little more than two and a half inches. In, in the end, turned out to be of some benefit in some area that the vines were struggling perhaps a bit too much. So they came back a bit uh, more efficient into the ripening. In the end, uh, one thing that was uh, challenging uh, for all of us, for myself a little bit, but more I would say for uh, our vineyard manager Fernando and Daniele in the cellar, was that a lot of the varieties this year especially the reds, came all together at ripening le at great ripening level only once. So we really have to um, push a bit hard and bring in uh, several uh, uh, vineyards uh, within a great proximity at one point. Uh, we had, uh, at the end of harvest, we had uh, almost 25 different tanks of red in fermentation and another 20-some uh, uh, tanks of white wine. Those uh, were already pretty much finished fermenting. So the cellar is full. Uh, the morale is better now. There's a bit more uh, relaxation, especially that we were able to avoid this uh, wet period. If we were to uh, have left uh, still some vines out, uh, it would have not been good because uh, when grapes are so close to ripening, the skins, uh, they're getting softer, the berries softer, so they can absorb water through the skin. And in some cases, uh, the, 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 the tissue can become soft, it can uh, split, whatever you have a, a, a skin that is splitting, the juice is uh, then uh, uh, exiting and is at the mercy of molds where they can quickly grow on it, especially in this type of weather. 
And then as that happened, you have to start going through the vines and eliminate the berries that are mold and so on. So I am glad we, we made it. I would have uh, only had, uh, I had one wish that um, didn't uh, follow through was to have uh, an extra week for a vineyard of Cabernet Sauvignon. It was the last one that was picked. It would have allowed us to uh, produce an excellent Cabernet Sauvignon. And in this case, uh, picking earlier, uh, we were able to do uh, a great one, but not an excellent. For all the other varieties, from all the whites in the early season, the Pinot Grigio, the Moscato, the Sauvignon Blanc, to the one in the end of the white harvesting, in particular the, the Vermentino, the timing of picking was ideal. The aromatics are extremely intense on all the white wines. The very, very bright, fresh darkness. On the reds, uh, the same. We were able to pick everything at optimum beside, I just mentioned, a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon. Also, we had a, a, a new vineyard coming into, into uh, harvest this year. It's a fairly large planting we did of Cabernet Franc, right uh, below the church, the, the white little church that sometimes you see in our videos. So that vineyard came in extremely strong, uh, adding quite a, a several, uh, quite se several uh, um, thousands of pounds uh, then, uh, of, uh, of Cabernet Franc for Barbuzo. And uh, of course, with all this uh, information I'm sharing, it's, uh, I'm perhaps uh, stating uh, the obvious, which is uh, that, uh, you know, when things are in such a great positive um, um, scenario, we do declare an octagon vintage and uh, it's a big deal for us as you recall we missed a few vintages 2000 2003 2011 the weather really did not cooperate we never made octagon so octagon vintage not only but uh, i am also declaring that this is a vintage that i rate at the max at 5.0 with one exception the Cabernet Sauvignon, which I rated a 4.5. 4 so, great news from Barbosil Vineyards. We will just go down uh, by the cellar, and there is one thing I want to show you in particular. There are some grapes that yet have to be crushed and fermented, and it is all the Moscato de Vidal, and this year we have some, some Petit Manseng. There's still uh, uh, air dry in a barn. We took a sample the other day and they are now at about 32 percent sugar content. We estimate that in another week to 10 days they will reach 34, 35 percent and we will crush them and we'll probably show you a little video perhaps uh, next week. But let's go down uh, by the cellar. Well here I am in this beautiful room full with uh, over 20 some thousand pounds of grapes. We picked uh, Moscato for Pasito around middle of August and you can see here how the clusters have dehydrated. Some berries are um, some berries are simply shriveled, like so. And then in some other, they are shriveled, but also they discolored. And I can tell you that this is exactly what we like. This type of dehydration creates aromatics very, very similar to when you eat a panettone at Christmas, like candied oranges, and, and raisins, but in particular, this, uh, this drying, it gives that uh, orange, uh, candied orange or orange peel characteristic. It's simply delicious. 
is something that we see a little less on Vidal. Vidal uh, in the drying doesn't show this type of deterioration. And um, let's go through here. Let's go find some uh, clusters of Vidal, which are here at the very end. So here is the Vidal. And as you see here, we have, uh, we have some, but not as many. And the flavor here, instead of the orange, is more like very ripe pear, um, almost also a little bit like pineapple. And then uh, we have uh, introduced this year one more variety that we anticipated to you in previous uh, videos that we would uh, be introducing also some Petit Mansang. This is our first uh, yield of Petit Mansang, first harvest. And we are dehydrating some Petit Mansang as well. So, once we press uh, these grapes in another about 10 days, we will officially have exhausted all the harvest per, per se, the, the crushing for the season. We're very excited to have this uh, this new blend, even though we have very successfully produced amazing pastitos through the year, as you know. I say probably is the most awarded uh, wine that we produce w at whatever wine competition it's sent over. And of course, it enters in the, into the sweet wines category. It always, always ranks at least in the top 5% of the whole competition of sweet wines. And uh, so, uh, with that said, I again want to uh, reiterate that what I said earlier that uh, the vintage I rate at 5.0, it is a 5.0 from 5, of course. I like, uh, I use a, a 0 to 5 for some reason, I chose that a while ago, but also I use some other expressions along with it. And uh, yes, uh, 2023 is not only excellent, but I would say outstanding, meaning standing above many other vintages. And with that, I say thank you to all of you for all those years to have uh, purchased our wine, consumed our wines. That's what keeps us motivated to grow more vineyard to excel in what we do, and thank you for it. See you next week. Goodbye.